So a while back I did a video on the do's and don'ts of using a fixative. This video will demonstrate to you the how to preserve your final look of your charcoal or pastel work the best you can and what sometimes can happen to your artwork when you use the fixative incorrectly. So here's a gentle gradient in charcoal and along with the fine details I found that these are the most delicate parts of my drawings and most commonly tend to get ruined by being sprayed with fixative. So let's divide the applications of fixative into sections unsprayed, just right, spray too close, spray too much, and hairspray. Of course this isn't a perfect scientific test as there are still too many variables and it's because of these variables that these unwanted results happen but don't always happen. The whole point of this video is to show you how to make your results more predictable and to avoid these unwanted results when using fixative by following these simple guidelines and tips every time you spray, if you have to. So let's spray. So here we are outside, I've got the test sheet with the masked off um, strips and I've got spray, a uh, fixative spray and I've got hairspray on the ground. So if you watched a previous video, I briefly showed you um, my technique for spraying fixative when I have to. So the first one is our control, white balance, there we go. First one is our control, so we're going to leave that alone, fully masked. Uh, the second one is our uh, Just Right. Now today's um, it's a little bit breezy, but basically you need to do this. You need to spray in the air, shake the can first, spray in the air and waft your art piece through the spray mist rather than directly, uh, rather than directly spraying on. So spray, Waft, so doing this spray, wafting method, waft, as opposed to directly spray, spraying, waft, allows the larger spray, droplets waft, from the spray can spray, to drop to the waft, ground before spray, they drop onto your work. Waft. Okay, so that should do. Next is um, too close. Now, with spraying too close, um, the immediate uh, problem you'll have is that you don't get enough, uh, you don't get enough coverage because um, the spray is in a conical shape. So you'll get a, a fixed uh, line of spray rather than a wider cone. And it's going to be um, more concentrated towards the centre and it'll dissipate towards the outer edges, which is not what we want. I'll show you. So this is too close. <laughs> Okay, and it also sprays way too much because it's, um, it doesn't have a ti enough time to spread. This leads us uh, nicely onto the next one, which is too much. So if you're spreading, uh, spraying at the optimum distance of a few inches, about 12, 8 to 12 inches, um, should be about this. Okay, that's one coat. You may, you may want a couple of coats, but um, we're going to have to spray it too much. So let's do more, and more again, and more again. And I can already see that it's completely saturated, if you look, you can see the reflecting there. Not ideal. Okay, that's completely saturated. I'll leave that open to dry a bit better. And next we've got uh, hairspray. Now with hairspray you might see initial okay results, possible. However, um, if you want to be a professional artist or you want your work to last, you shouldn't use hairspray because it's non-archival, meaning it's uh, it'll degrade over time. So let's mask off our too much and spray, fix uh, hairspray at the optimum distance. And it's a completely different, um, completely n different nozzle design. It'll vary as well from different brands, um, but you, different, you get different control over the spray cone of how you apply it. All right, so that's all of them done. Let's have a look. So already I can see 
the hairspray hasn't given very good coverage and uneven coverage as, as the too close was more of a line just right was yeah it's okay it's just right and the control is also okay so as you can see there there's some weird vertical banding so that was the too close too much is look how much darker that is all right it, it really affects all of the tones and you can see the patchiness of the hairspray but if you look my technique and no fixative spray um, are almost identical. The problem with my technique is that it probably isn't going to protect it that much. It just leaves a very light dusting um, which will protect it against knocks, but it won't protect it against um, Let's see, I'll see if there's a dry bit here of the too much. So if I touch the too much, nothing comes off my fingers. So it's a kind of a compromise. You might want to spray using my technique a lot more, just to kind of meet it in the middle there. So it's a compromise of if you want to protect your work fully, you're going to have to compromise in uh, your artwork being tonally affected it'll get darker and it'll stay darker so uh, let me show you a still photograph of this so you can see in more uh, detail of uh, the effects of all the different um, sections so if you watch the <laughs> excuse me which leads us nicely onto the next one, which is too close. So next you might want to watch this video if you haven't already on uh, the do's and don'ts of using fixative. Um, if you have, you might want to watch this one here on uh, my process of using charcoals and drawing still life, where in which there's a, a full downloadable tutorial on Gumroad. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.